Welcome back to a screenwriter's journey. It's day 164. I'm trying to catch up on my voiceovers and I had a brilliant idea. I'll just talk super fast. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> all right. Yesterday, I didn't really talk about the script at all because I was off on a tangent, which I'm sure you found very informative, especially if you're watching this after having seen this movie be made from the script and saying, oh my gosh, I would love to know more about his writing process and just his thought process in general. Seems unlikely, but that's my hope. All right. So, man, I... Um, so Ace has just given that line about insurance. Rachel looks at him like it's the first smart thing he's ever said. I like that line. And obviously that I think would give the actress all she needs to know to successfully express and emote. So we got a little more virgin writing-ish here. Um, up at the Big Eagle Creek. Oops, as soon as I say that. Okay, no, here we go. Um... Luke, I'm trying to make it so A, he's kind of goofy, but B, you can tell that he's always either thinking of Jake or comparing himself to him or bringing up some family matter or history or something that gives us the impression that he really does love his brother. And who doesn't love his brother or her brother? Um, so having said that, the, the Huck Finn line, I think, is maybe a keeper, uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, but again, you quickly get off onto this tangent of since when do you fish? And then Luke's reply, which I don't know, it's not horrible, but not in love with it. It is super interesting to consider, as we often have here, where dialogue comes from it's one of those things that if you start thinking and overthinking it you could just get lost in a quagmire and then you start not really panicking but over analyzing it and thinking to yourself oh my gosh i i don't know where it comes from how can i think of some good dialogue to say and then you you panic and you freak out and you spend three days not writing dialogue Hey, it could happen. The point is, uh, dialogue is easy to write when it's not good. <laughs> or when you're just fleshing out the characters. It's actually a lot of fun to write dialogue. As you know, being an accomplished writer like you are and like I am. And so they get into this whole conversation and... Then I'm trying to work in <laughs> forcing, trying to work into the part about why Hogan is doing what he's doing. And then he gives a quick backstory about his parents retired and he's taken over. Um, but um, it's, I don't know, it's, it's not really going to work. And again, it's crazy. I'm looking back. This is uh, January 3rd that I wrote this. So again, it's almost exactly six weeks, six weeks and a couple days. And it just seems like ancient history because this is the, I guess this is the first time I really worked on this version of this scene. And it's just crazy how different you can think in six weeks or one week or 24 hours. But that's how it happens. So that's what you got to deal with. He's missing. So they're fishing. I mean, again, it's not well, my my personal non-judgmental, totally objective opinion. It's not bad dialogue. It just it has no real place. Um, here, although, you know, Hogan works in that part about working on a little catch of his own, which is kind of clever, and that could be something worthy of keeping. Obviously, 
alluding, you know, subtext, blah, 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 all that stuff. Whenever you can work that in and it makes sense and doesn't seem forced, then that's a good thing. Then, of course, you keep in mind good news, bad news, raising the stakes, ticking clock. As I've said before, the mad, glad, sad, and happy or whatever they are. But then Abby's got that line. <laughs> Uh, it kind of makes me, I mean, it's grown in a funny sort of way that she would probably never say it. Um, and then, of course, he delivers the line stolen from Dumb and Dumber. Basically, my girlfriend doesn't get out much. It's para paraphrasing, of course. Which, I don't know, with, with really famous lines, you know, um, here's looking at you, kid, <laughs> comes to mind, or roads where we're going we don't need roads and the napalm thing from apocalypse now i don't know if i guess you can legally use those well-known lines um obviously some dialogue it's not like you can have totally unique dialogue in every movie because there are sentences phrases whatever that people say all the time just because you know, I guess they're in the public domain. But like, you know, that McDonald's line, I'm loving it, which they have used that catchphrase for, I swear, 20 years. They used to change them all the time. Have it your way. No, that's Burger King, but whatever. Um, but they've been using that for a long time and they have the little TM or registered. And so you feel like every time you say I'm loving it about whatever, you got to pay McDonald's a royalty. I'm not sure how that works from dialogue, for dialogue. I did hear that the movie Airplane back in the 70s, 80s, 80s, awesome movie, was basically they lifted almost all of the lines, from what I understand, from a movie or a couple of movies back from the 40s and 50s. And that was like a serious drama back then. But they took them... And I, I don't know if it's just the situation or the delivery or what, and just made them into total comedy lines. Now, that certainly can't be true because like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's part about, hey, Johnny, uh, Billy, what was his name, Billy? Hey, Billy, have you ever been in a s Turkish prison or whatever? Obviously, those weren't from that movie. I should do some more research on that. Um because the point is, can you take lines of dialogue from a movie? Certainly you couldn't, I don't know, if they get in the public domain, like other works of writing, if after a certain amount of time you could lift a whole scene's worth of dialogue uh, verbatim. I don't know how that would work. But you then you have the thing about, oh, well, you don't want to use cliches and people talking in lines and ways that you've heard before but then neither can any be can any movie i wouldn't think be said to be totally unique in that oh my gosh i've never heard someone say that before um so you, i guess there's a fine line and you try to maybe give homage or you hint or you tip your hat towards something and um you do that, plus you try to do new stuff, and then maybe some stuff is just kind of tried and true. That's another thing you can really overthink along with, you know, where does the dialogue come from? Obviously, it comes from your head, but what gives you those thoughts? Is it because you know the character so well, you know, this, you know the story so well, uh, or exactly what? But it's super interesting to think about. So as I say that, I am looking along, duct tape, triple around her mouth. So obviously Holly has been knocked out or rendered unconscious or something and put into another location. Well, on here we see it's the second floor. She's all tied up. She can't scream. She can't really do anything. Excuse me. Oh, my goodness. And then they hear a helicopter back at the Big Eagle Creek. Um, 
So this is another thing that I feel kind of is getting forced in here. I mean, would they hear the helicopter? Probably if they did take them out of there by helicopter, how far away would have they gone to get on the helicopter? And would it be close enough that they would hear it? Would they take the risk of that? Um, I don't know. I mean, I could see him landing the helicopter fairly close because if you look at it from the bad guy's perspective, they don't know, first of all, about Abby and Luke. They, let's see, do the guy, do Ace and Clyde know about Hogan? Probably not, because I guess the, you start thinking of the whole backstory of, you know, you're not going to explain exactly where Ace and Clyde came from. And at this point, we don't know who they're working for. Are they working for Salerno, the ex? Are they working for Holly? No, probably not. Are they working for Rachel? No matter who they're working for, how did they get there? You know, did they fly in on the helicopter? How long ago did it land? Where did it land? Did anyone else hear it? And this is one of those things you can really get bogged down on that I was talking about, where you try to explain every single thing and, you know, make the logic 100% work, which I guess is fine as long as it doesn't come at the expense of telling the story, which it frequently... Ooh, the wind is really whipping out there. It's a cold winter day in my secret location. Um, yeah, so that is something to consider of how much, you know, to totally explain. And I've mentioned this before. At what point the audience will just buy in and say, okay, well, I don't really care because I'm you know, enjoying, I'm so into the story that it doesn't matter exactly how this got set up. Certainly, I mean, you literally can't show everything that happens. Luke or uh, Jake, la, 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 Clyde and Ace waking up and getting a call and saying, all right, today you're going to be a henchman and you're going to do this and you're going to go there. And so you kind of need to pick the battles in terms of the story logic and Really, until someone else reads it, then they'll tell you if the story's working, if it's too outrageous, if it's too nonsensical, etc. Because you can love it all you want, and it can make total sense to you and me. Because, again, uh, me personally, I have read every page of this script. By the time I get done writing it, I've read each page at least 10 times if you think about it. And so, you know, I mean, you could basically quote dialogue. It's funny, the key, the movie I made whenever 12 years ago or whenever that was, I could still quote big chunks of that dialogue just because I wrote it and then I wrote it and wrote it and wrote it. Then I filmed it. I didn't film it. I filmed some of it, but edited it, edited it. That is the weirdest word to say, edited it. Two words, but it's still weird to say. Um, but <laughs> I will get off on these tangents. Yeah, just talking about dialogue and uh, how it works. And uh, I was talking about something else. People watching this are like, Jack, why don't you remember your trains of thoughts? Because they get derailed too often. So I'm, I'm back here. It is weird. I, I think it's, I'm writing today and I just paused again to do some of this. And so I'm thinking of my current writing and those scenes. And then I'm reading this that I wrote six weeks ago. And then I'm thinking of other stuff. It's a multitasking situation. Um, so now, see, we get into this backstory. So again, does it matter to the audience how Hogan came to be where he is? And I'd mentioned before the gentleman who read my script and really tore into it in a good way had told me that a good character is someone who you can imagine his or her life when he's not 
in that scene. So like, what did Hogan do this morning? What will Hogan do tomorrow morning? So if you can picture that, then in his estimation, that's a sign of good character writing, and I have no reason to disbelieve him. There certainly is a difference, and I mentioned this before. He wrote for TV uh, a lot of great stuff. And so you've got, what, on a 60-minute show on broadcast TV, you've got a f probably a 50-ish page script because it's about 42, 43 minutes, which is crazy when you think about it. 18 minutes out of the hour that you're not actually watching your TV show. The point is that... When you write a whole series and you've got 20 episodes, you can obviously layer in a lot more character stuff, whether it's an ongoing, you know, an episodic or whatever. Um, and so I think it's easier to do that when you've seen a character for a long time and uh, as opposed to a movie where it's like, bang, you sit down and you've never seen these people before. You've got to connect the dots as the writer and as the audience. And then, you know, it's over. And unless there's a sequel, it's, well, I hope you accomplished everything, which is another reason why I contend, along with many others, that writing a screenplay is the hardest form of writing in the world. But speaking of writing, I, I seem to have walked away from my computer here because um, I don't I haven't seen the cursor move in a long time. Let's just check that out. Well, I just reviewed it and confirmed that I don't write anything for the rest of the day. I'm not sure what happened. My uh, apologies. Uh, hopefully the voiceover was enough to carry you through day 164. Too bad if it wasn't 162, it would rhyme with through, but it didn't, so it doesn't. Anyways, we're in the can. I don't know what to say. We just continue on. See you tomorrow. Thanks so much.